Assalam o Alaikum. Dear learners, in this video, I am going to explain the most important part of any digital signal processing system, that is, the data acquisition system. This system is responsible for collecting the data from the real world, mostly in the analog form, convert it into a digital form, and route towards a processor or a computer where you have implemented the software for performing the digital signal processing. Once the processing is complete, the DAC system takes the digital output, converts it back into the analog form, and feed it to the real world. Specifically talking about the data acquisition, which is abbreviated as DAQ or DAC, is the process of measuring an electrical or physical phenomena with the help of a computer. This whole system has three major parts. The first one is the sensor that will pick up the signal from the real world. Then comes the DAC measurement hardware that is responsible for conversion of real world data into digital world and then back from the digital world to the real world. And last but not the least, the processor over which the software will run for implementing the digital signal processing. Normally, for student projects and for many other projects as well, the computing power of a personal computer is exploited for performing the digital signal processing. The interface options, the processing power, display, storage capabilities, and cost effectiveness are few of the things that makes personal computers a reasonable choice for implementing digital signal processing. However, dedicated processors are also sometimes used where a PC-based data acquisition system cannot be implemented. This simple flow graph shows the three basic components of a data acquisition system that I discussed. The sensor would be responsible for collecting the information from the real world, whereas the DAC device will act as a bridge between the sensor and the computer. Most of the data acquisition devices have inbuilt analog signal conditioning circuitry that they use to condition the incoming signal from the sensor so that noise present in the analog domain cannot creep into the digital domain. After the analog to digital converter converts the analog signal into a digital one, it is routed to the computer using a bus interface. Every kind of operation and processing is done at the computer. Whereas, if you need any data back in the output world, apart from display and storage, the computer sends back the digital signal to the DAC device, which will convert the digital data into the analog form and route it to the attached actuator or any other suitable instrument. Let me explain each component of DAC device in a bit detail. There are three major operations a DAC device has to perform. The first one is the signal conditioning. The second one is the conversion from analog to digital or from digital to analog domain. And the last one is routing data to and from the computer. In the signal conditioning portion, as I've already said, that the analog data that is being generated by the sensor might be corrupted or noisy, or it might be in such a form that cannot be directly processed. Therefore, the signal conditioning portion of a DAC device utilizes circuitries to convert the incoming signal into a form which is suitable for analog to digital conversion. This circuitry over here might include anything which we have studied under the heading of analog signal processing. The next thing in the DAC device is the analog to digital converter. For any kind of operation in the digital domain, this device is a must-have component because it is going to convert the continuously varying analog signal into a discrete digital signal. Although the analog signal is continuously varying, but the analog to digital converter converts the analog signal and transmits samples or packets of data. This thing can better be understood if we know how an analog to digital converter works. There are numerous kinds of architectures that are used for analog to digital converters. However, I would recommend learners to go through the referenced videos explaining successive approximation ADCs and flash ADCs. In the referenced videos, I have explained in detail the working of both kind of ADCs. Once the signal has been converted into a digital form, 
using an analog to digital converter, the digital data is to be routed to the computer and normally it is done through a bus. Bus is a word used for data communication medium. For example, you must be aware of the word USB, which stands for Universal Serial Bus. Depending on the standards that is being used by the data acquisition hardware, there are number of options for this bus. You can have a simple USB connection with a computer or a PCI connection, a PCI Express connection or Ethernet. And even you can have a wireless connection based on Wi-Fi protocol for communication. Each type of the bus has its own advantages and form factor. So depending on the application, you can choose what kind of interface is suitable for you. Apart from these fundamental operations, there are many other operations that a DAC device can perform. For example, some DAC devices does not have any digital to analog converter in them, whereas the others have a built-in digital to analog converter as well. Moreover, some applications demand digital inputs and outputs where the sensor is generating a digital output. Furthermore, a DAC device can have counters, timers, abilities to generate digital pulses, and many other things as well. Over here, I would like to stop and recommend the learners to go through the reference videos explaining the working of two different kinds of ADCs and a third video as well explaining the working of a simple digital to analog converter. This was everything about the basics of digital signal processing and data acquisition hardware. I hope now the viewers have a clear understanding that how a data acquisition device works and what is its purpose. Goodbye and take care.